Over the course of this movie project that we've been doing, I've had many divine appointments. God has put people into my life that I, I'm so thankful for. One person contacted me from overseas and told me that they were a very high-ranking occultist and asked to remain anonymous. And this person made an outstanding claim to me. They said that the modern church has occult practices all in it, but most of them don't even see it. So I asked this person to compile a list of things that the modern churches are doing that is born in the occult. And I'm gonna share this information with you now in this video. There are five words on the board that I wanna go through. Witchcraft, divination, enchantments, Eastern mysticism, and necromancy. And I wanna define all of these and give you an example of each one of these practices being done in the church. The first one is witchcraft. And witchcraft is the usage of spiritual power not given by God's Holy Spirit. You're using a spiritual power not given by God's Holy Spirit. An example of this is the Kundalini Spirit. And you see that manifest many different ways in churches today. But witchcraft is often heavily associated with symbolism. And the modern church today has no clue what they're even looking at when they look at a modern occult symbol. I challenge you to go look at how many pyramids are being shown in churches today. I mean, the main concert has pyramids all over it. Another example of this is the Enneagram, and this is very popular today. People are using it to tell their personality types and things like that. I never have done the Enneagram, but the Enneagram is an occultic symbol. You, you're, you're practicing witchcraft when you are using the Enneagram. The Book of Ceremonial Magic, including sorcery and necromancy. I mean, just let me just show you some of the stuff in this book. I mean, this is... This is the occult. And I don't know what number you are, and I don't care what number you are. You should not be using esoteric symbols to reveal truth about yourself. You are practicing witchcraft. If you just open up that Bible and start reading, God will give you plenty about yourself to last you a whole lifetime. You don't need some witchcraft symbol to show you your strengths and weaknesses. God's Word can do that plenty good without that. Another thing is the imagery that's on albums today. You can see it on Casting Crowns albums, the As Above, So Below symbol. And it's everywhere. And if you understand, the occult is something that basically means it's hidden. It's hidden in plain view. And you didn't see it, and I didn't see it for a long time either, but I think now is the time for you to open up your eyes and see. Another word that we have here is divination. It basically means fortune telling, that I know something's about to happen. Uh, that is often associated with psychics and things like that. And it's very clever how it's matched today, but when a preacher gets up and says, God has something for you, there's a breakthrough about to happen in your life, there is something good coming down the way for you, that's nothing more than just divination in Jesus' name. That's all you're doing. The only foretelling you can do is what that Bible tells you is going to happen. That's the only thing you have. 
And so be careful of divination. Another word is enchantment. And the, the word enchantment means a hypnotic euphoria. Basically, if you're captivated by something, we use the word enchanted by that. And that is witchcraft. And when you're enchanted by something, you have like this inordinate affection towards it and you are possessed by that and that's what enchantment is. One of the main ways that the occult world enchants people is through hypnosis and the way they do that is by repeating things over and over and over again and the modern church is practicing this with these shallow repetitive emotional songs that they just repeat the same phrase like a like God is good and God is good and God is good and they repeat that over and over and over again and you get some sort of spiritual euphoria from that well that's not the Holy Spirit that's witchcraft uh You are not being blessed, you are being enchanted. And when I was a teenager, Baptist preachers would call those 7-Eleven songs, seven words repeated 11 times. And I do find it interesting that the first mention of the word enchantment in the Bible is Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. But that just may be a gigantic coincidence, and what do I know? I'm just a guy with the Bible here. Another example of this is necromancy. Faith healers do this all the time. They claim that they have the power to raise the dead, which that's what necromancy is. You are raising the dead. And the classic example of that uh, was the Wake Up Olive incident out there at Bethel Church in Redding, California in 2019. A young little girl died, and they spent five days praying for that child to be resurrected. That is necromancy. That's what they're doing. Praying and, and trying to seek spiritual power to raise a deceased human. That's necromancy. And lastly, the most prevalent one, in my opinion, is Eastern mysticism in the modern church. The only difference between the occult and Eastern mysticism is geography. Hinduism is nothing more than the occult in the Far East. That's all it is. An example of Eastern mysticism is people talk about karma, what goes around comes around. That's Eastern mystic talk. Modern martial arts is eat up with Eastern mysticism. Focusing your chi and finding your center. That's all Eastern mysticism. And the most prevalent one today, which I find it funny that most women are doing this, is yoga. There is far more to yoga than just exercise. Basically what you're doing is you're standing in these poses and you are making your body an antenna for spiritual demons to possess you. That is the purpose behind doing these poses. You are worshiping deities. And when you are doing these poses, you are actually acting out the Bahatma Gita stories. You're acting out demon gods fighting each other in ancient battles and that's what you're doing. And so there's a spiritual element to that. And so these are the modern occult practices in everyday modern churches. And guys, it creeps in, it sneaks in, because this mystery religion thrives off of being hidden in plain view, creeping in unawares, as the Bible says. And if you have this stuff in your life, you need to get rid of it as soon as possible.